evening, guys. Um, just want to say thank you for uh, I know, I know, Pass is always up here, and you know, it's just for a while to so on so forth. So, uh, I'll try to, uh, uh, you know, beat that level if I can. But anyway, you know what God's going to do for us. I really do pray and hope that, you know, when God will help him to the person who's uh, this is an issue that I believe no one really wants to talk about. And um, we're going to confront the issue. So, uh, Daniel, we've got the Bible, Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, we're going to read verse 15. Okay, so, in, uh, we know the story uh, in 9 11. Uh, Something that has basically touched the nation. Uh, as you know, uh, many lives were taken through the 9-11 incident. And there was a documentary that was out, or I believe it was a film, how that when so many civilians were stuck in the building, uh, what happened was, was that there was uh, a fireman that went in to, into the building. Obviously, there's rubble, as you can be aware. So there was, like, as you know, flames, smoke, etc. were in this building. There was a fireman who was, all, you know, was called to duty to basically go in there and basically bring out as much civilians as possible. Also, there was a, a, a policeman also there, you know, had the courage to actually go into the building and basically uh, do the same thing. What intended to happen was is that both of them got stuck in this building. As you're going to be aware, fire is going on, smoke is going on. And so what happens is, is that, you know, as the uh, fireman is caught up, you know, rubble's on top of him, rocks are on top of him, same as the police. What intended to happen was, is that they started to communicate with one another. They, they're both stuck. They can't come out. And so, uh, you know, the policeman is being very, very weary. You know, can't really speak much because... You know, when it comes to smoke and you breathe it, you know, it does a lot on your lungs. You know, they always say that, you know, that like fire is, you know, fire is, you know, it, it's dangerous. But how many of us know that smoke kills? So, you know, the uh, fireman is saying to the policeman, hey, 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 you know, keep, keep, keep away, keep away. Talk to me, talk to me. But tell me about your life. Tell me about your kids. Tell me, you know, he was just doing that as a strategy to keep, you know, this policeman alive. As you know, outside, you know, fire brigades and so on and so forth, they're coming through, you know, they're moving the rubble and they save these two men. But, you know, uh, after the story, it basically says that, you know, the, the, the policeman was going through trauma. You know, as you you can be aware, you know, you're stuck in a building, you're almost about to leave your, you know, lose your life. Many people suffer with PA, uh, PTSD, you know, people suffer with trauma, etc. But... What I want to preach about is that many people go through trials, go through the fire, but don't survive the storm. Meaning that you could be going through the fire. We've all gone through fires. We all go through trials. But some way, even though you went through the trial, the smoke is still moving on. So we're going to touch on this text today. Daniel chapter 3, 15, and it says, uh, yeah, now if you are ready at the time to hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyra, and palstry, and in simple, with all kinds of music, and you will fall down and worship the image, which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of of a burning fury, fury furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered it and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer to you in this matter. If, if that is the case, our God whom we serve 
is able to deliver us from the burning fury, fury furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if you do not let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God, nor we will worship the gold image which you have set up. Verse 19. He said, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and he expressed his faith, um, he expressed his, um, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they um, heat the furnace seven times more than it usually heated. And he commanded the certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burn, uh, burning fury furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, uh, and their garments and were cast into the midst of the burning and fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king commanded, um, commanded was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot um, exceedingly hot, the flame of um, the flame of the fire killed those men who took uh, took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. People, nations, and languages are all commanded to be underneath King Nebuchadnezzar's presence. He is a man who is actually in authority. I mean, this is a man who's actually, you know, commanded people to worship uh, this 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 image because he knew that, you know, what there's a there's there's a power in fear. He's gathered people together to know that I am the man. If you do not worship this image, there is consequences. How many of us know that? You know, like when we uh, we are we 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 we're, we're basically always. Uh, tested by our faith you know we're living in a world now today where you know what if you if you're a christian and you say you're a christian at this modern day time you get all kind of stuff you haven't got the fear against us yet you can still have freedom but here's these people they don't have um, um, freedom of speech they're not standing up like shadrach meshach and abednego and said hey we're not bowing down what happens is, is that our text they were quiet. Why is that? Think with me because I, I like to get into the text. Imagine King Nebuchadnezzar showing these people an example of his dominance. Saying that if you don't do this, crank up the fire. And you meant, you know, maybe a few people didn't listen to King Nebuchadnezzar at that point. And so he makes an example of it. Think about it. The smoke of human flesh, the smoke of burning clothes, the smoke of hair. We all know though that, that, that smell. It's, it's amazing that when you smell something, it triggers something in your brain. And it makes you aware, it makes you alarmed, and it makes you attentive. So you can imagine all these people in the midst of King Nebuchadnezzar saying, you know what? Oh, I remember that smoke. I don't want to smell that again. So what intends to happen? They bow down. They remember the smoke, and the smoke that lingers is what makes them not to pursue. You think about it. Smelling the, 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 the human flesh, hearing the wailing, and now saying that, you know what? Oh, king, oh, king, whatever you want, we shall do. And so all of a sudden... In our text, we see the king set brings an ultimatum and says, you know what, let's crank up the fire even more because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we shall not bow. Think about the people in the midst saying, you guys, are you crazy? Do you know what, 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 what this guy is going to do to you? We smelt the smoke before. The smoke that, that lingered, I remember the pain that these people were going through. And so what happens is, is that people will say, I'll do anything just to forget that smell. Here's a man who says he plays music. How many of us know that, you know, like, when it comes to music, if it's your favorite song, you know, you, you think of the old days. You think of the old days. Some of you got a song that you're banging out right now, and it reminds you of the old days. 
But how many of us know that when it, when you play that song, it brings you back to the point of like what you were doing at that moment in time. You don't shake it off, you just remember it. But here is music and here is smoke, both coming together. When the music is played, everybody must bow down. If not, you know the consequences. So these people don't want to go further like that. Without Jesus Christ, many people are going through this various thing. Where there's a trial that is going on, they can't get out of it because there's an ultimatum. And so what it is, is when they go through that ultimatum, that struggle in life, that pain, the fiery furnace, all of a sudden, smoke, you, they, they end up having smoke on them. Billy Graham said this once. He said, there's two types of fires. One fire that destroys and one fire that purifies. And there's many fires that people are going through that their lives are being destroyed. And because they keep on going through this various trial, this various pain, this very consistent thing of thinking that life is not going to change for me. Years have gone on where they live their life. They probably have children. They probably have moved on. But the smoke still remains. You can't shake it off. If you think about it, you know, when you go on out, you see many people on the road. You know, see people who are begging. I remember there was a guy. And there was a homeless man that was sitting outside McDonald's. And what happened was that Tony sat down and when he sat down right next to him, he looked up. He to and the guy did not want to hear it. He was shouting at him, saying, Go away, I don't want to hear about your Jesus stuff. Go away, I don't want to hear about your Jesus stuff. And you know Tony, Tony just don't care, no wisdom. He just does what he does. He said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going through pain as well, but you tell me about your pain. That's what Tony was doing. So the guy started to say, go away, I don't want to hear this. Go away, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And so what happens is, the guy starts to throw everything out there. This is what happened to me when I was young. I was taken advantage of at a certain age. And so I began to do this, I began to do that, I began to do this and that and that and that, to the point now this man is on the streets. He's lived his life, years, going on. The smoke, you can smell the smoke. You can smell the pain. Going through various trials in life. And so it's, 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 there's many people in this situation. Sinners, Christians. If you haven't got Jesus Christ, amen, accept it today. But many people are walking through trials, getting hit amongst hateness, you know, trials of life, COVID, all these things is messing people up. And all you hear and hear out of people's mouths is nothing but pain and you can smell the smoke. Have you, I don't know if, um, I'm going to share a story with you guys. I remember when I was, um, uh, in secondary school, and uh, my mom used to say to me, uh, you know, I used to come home, my mom was, you know, she's worried about, not worried, but she's, she's thinking, of oh, my son's up to no good, my son's not to, up to no good, he's always coming home late, you know, and so when I came home, my mom used to say, Michael, what is that on you? I'm like, what, mom? What? I don't, I don't what? She said, have you been smoking, Mike? And I was like, no. She said, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure, but I'm not smoking. I'm, I'm telling you. She was like, okay. Next day, Michael, have you been smoking? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm honest, my mum. I haven't been smoking. I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm not a smoker. I'm me smoking. Nah, I'm not on smoking. And so what happened was there's a point where my mum smelled my blazer. And it was like cigarette smokes. Right? And she said, you are smoking. You are smoking. And I was like, Mom, I'm telling you, I'm not smoking. I don't smoke. I'm not. I think that's nasty, whatever. But you know the funniest thing is? Is that I used to hang around with people who did smoke. After school, they would have their cigarettes, light up. But I wasn't, I wasn't smoking. I wasn't. I'm not, I wasn't 
Eid was later on in time, but you know what I mean, at that current in time. But you know what, I wasn't a smoker. But the problem is, is that the, what they were smoking, obviously, you know, smoke goes into your cold throat. So I went home and my mom was saying that, you know what, oh, you are smoking. But you know what was, what, what, what was serious about that is, is that many of us hang around people who are have a smoke like their their, their life smells of smoke and then it transfers onto you and you smell of smoke. How many of us know that smoke is transferable? It floats. And so you, when you're when you're around the wrong people, smoke lingers. Without Jesus Christ you embrace and you know like many people they endorse many things that is out there. You hear one thing, you take it on. Yeah, the TV says this, so it must be true. The news says this, it must be true. And all, before, all, all you know you're doing is you're endorsing smoke. You're endorsing smoke. We sympathize with people out there. But I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful. Because one day, you know, what intends to happen is, is that the smoke speaks against the fall on you. People have said words that maybe are offended. Saying that you're you're bound, you, you know you're you're not going to become nothing. King Nebuchadnezzar says, "Bow down to me, bow down to the image, or this will happen to you." You've been tested by your faith so many times, and now you're you're the point. Then point, embrace the smoke. There's many people that have actually gone through trials. This is where it happens with us Christians. Oh, there's probably smoke that you're going through. You're going through a trial. And the smoke is there. You fail to actually turn the smoke. What I mean is that maybe someone's offended. Someone says stuff about you. So, it just even takes that bad for someone to mention their name and to remember them. All of a sudden, you smoke. It reminds you of the past. Maybe you, someone violated you at a young age. You smoke is still there. And even though when you're moving on in age, you grow older and children, you smoke is still There's maybe secrets that you find that you know what it's not it's not bad. Maybe you were violated when you were young, you know, but you live on, you probably got married or so and so forth, but your spouse doesn't know, and I'm not saying that you need to sit down and open up and so on and so forth, but you know sometimes we question that why are you like this? Why are you like this? There's there's something that is actually hurting you here. But you don't think you can open up. Reason being is because you went through something. You went through the trials of life. The smoke is dead. Other people can tell they're smoking. But you can't. Many people can smell it. But you can't. The walking aroma. I'm not that kind of aroma. But walking aroma. You can smell the smoke. And so when you, you know, and so you know like some people say, you know, I don't want my child, children or my child to grow up like how I grew up. Your child won't know this because they don't know what you went through. They don't know. And so what intends that happens is, is that, you know what, that you, 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 you're walking years upon years and years and years and years within your life to the point it's your deathbed and then people are still trying to figure out what happened? Why was mom or dad like this? Why was my sister like this? It's a serious issue because what it tends to happen is, is that you get saved now and Jesus is actually walking in our text. But when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't bow down, what did the king do? He said, throw them in the 
friends. So what happens is, is that when he looks in, he says, did I not cast down three? So why do I see a fourth person? Jesus, the picture of that is, is that Jesus is walking with you through your star. That cast down And so when Jesus is walking with you in this trial, what he's basically saying is that, you know what, I'm with you. You're not going through this alone. But what Jesus doesn't want is that when you go through this trial, that you're still holding on to the small. What he's trying to do is protect you. Many, the thing is, is that sometimes we don't open up and say, well, It's for too long. It's hindering me to the point where, like, I'm suffering. So this is where depression happens. So this is where depression happens. Jesus is saying, no, I'm not alone. I mean, you're not alone. I'm with you. Smoke. Smoke. Is there smoke in your life right now? Have you cut off God? Have you said, you know what, God, I'm going through this trial, but you're not hearing me. Have you said to God that, you know what, or have you said to yourself that, ah, God can't help me with this? It's too embarrassing to talk about. The devil tells you, no, keep the smoke, keep it, keep it. I love the smell of it. Maybe, you know, like I said, I'm repeating myself because this is where we lay at the door at the altar. Generational curses. Generational curses. Generation after generation after generation after generation. Smoke! And you're saying, what? You know, we say, why is my family like this? Why am I like this? Because of the smoke. The aroma is still lingering. But you're thinking, ah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Let's shake it off, let's shake it off. No, 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 no. Let's not do that. Jesus is, look at this, in the trial. Jesus is in the trial with you. And he wants to purify. Purify the thing. Can't even look at the person who has done you wrong. Can't even look at them. Say, yeah, I forgive. But it's hard. Smoke. Forgiveness, maybe. In the sense of parents or uncle, family. Can't live life, can't go on because of Christians are very good at smiling. Come Sunday and die. Ah, you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, yeah, so. I can't spell it, so I'm going to smoke it. So, oh. Yes, we have reference points. Yes, we do remember things. We have a shift. If 
you're here and you're not safe, you not born again, you want to accept Jesus Christ. You want to save them. That's life. Years, walking in these years of saying I'm 10 years safe, 12 years safe, 3 years safe, but you're not safe. Come back to the world. You know, saying that oh, this Christian thing is too long. I've suffered one child and man smoking as I say, I hope God loves me and that's it. Bail out. Because it's too long. That's you and you want to come back. Don't let it be the next month or the next day while you're still dealing with it. And then that day becomes a week, that week becomes a month, that month becomes a year, and then it becomes years. Don't let that carry on to your children. Don't let that carry on with you. If you don't like the trial, and okay, I understand it, but this is where you speak. Find a place to pray, find a place to pray, find a place to pray. Sensitive in this place. I'm believing in God. I really am. I really am. I really am. God, you know. God, you know. God, you know. Smoke. Smoke is lingering. As much as I don't want to admit it, it's there. It's hurting me. Years upon years upon years. Days I've been going through this. Weeks, months. Even if even if it's just like someone who says it in school, someone says something to you in school. Someone says something to you in college, uni. They they, they look at they look at you know the Christian faith and then they, they say, Oh, forget your God. Forget it. Like God, God's not real. And then you know you want to retaliate. You want to retaliate, or, or you know, people, people are, 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 are the, you know, your friends don't know where you stand, and then it's at a point where like you're disappointed, and you're thinking, is it, you know, you start questioning yourself, and then when you question and question and question, what I intend to happen, smoke is on top of you, to the point that you know, confusion. Heal me, purify the flame. Do not want a spiritual life in the kingdom. Do not want my spiritual life to smell of smoke. God, I pray you will be saved. Try to step out for God. 
try to achieve something with God and it hasn't gone your way. And you feel like you failed. People said things to you within the ministry, or you even, or so even not even a person in the ministry, or even it's outside said, you know what? Say stuff about your, say stuff about your family. You try to go forward. And as much as you try to go forward, the smoke is still there. Remember those words. You feel like you can't go again because of the smoke. You know, many times people speak against the church. Many, many times. So, why it tends to happen to us is that we as we uh, get like uh, get very very defensive to the point where like it's, it's hurt it's and you know what you, just, you continue to live your life like man I can't trust that person you say stuff about me it's just like it's just a smoke that was smoke and you don't even realize it it's smoke Kill people at these altars, Lord, rule them, rule them. You are going through a trial right now, or you have been going through like, trials. It's always coming up, you know. What I mean? But there's something I've received later before the altar. But you know what? There was a specific thing, a specific time, or something that someone said to you that you know what the smoke lingered. And you know what? You don't want to ever go through that again, or you know. Pops up time and time and time again. It might not be straight away, but you know what? Smoke is there. Smoke is there. Yes, we laid before, but you know what? I want us to pray as, as, our, as, as a congregation that you know what? That you want to break this cycle. You know, you want to break this cycle. You don't want the smoke to linger. If that's you, stand. Let's come to the front. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you. Hallelujah. Smoke, 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 smoke. This is for your children, man. This is for your children. The reason why I say this is because, you know, like you say, you know, many of us say that, you know what, I don't want to be like my parents, man. We say this, you know what I mean? We love our parents and so on and so forth. But you see the decisions that they've made. And then you're like, Mom, don't you understand that this is hurting your dad? Don't you understand this is hurting you? And so on and so forth. But then you know what, that you've seen the pain that has happened. But you've took, you've taken that pain. You've taken that. You've taken the smoke and you put it upon yourselves. You know, sometimes we want to protect our parents, but then you take some of their burdens on you, and the smoke is there. And then you go on in years, and then before you know it, that that smoke is you. You become what they become, and then you do it onto your children. We're gonna break that. It might be various things. It might be various things, but you know. We're going to break the cycle of smoke. Maybe it started in you. Maybe you're the big winner of this smoke. The first trial is a trial that you feel like, man, this is heavy. You don't want to do it. You want to break this. Let's just pray to God and say, God, you know what? God, help. Actually, repeat after me. Father, I'm praying, God, that you help me. Years of pain that my family have gone through. Months, days, years of pain that you may have seen in my life. God, I'm asking, help me.
control. Release the people. That have spoken words and done things to you. Father, I pray that you break the curse and that you will start a renewing spirit in me. Father, I release them. Let them go. Let's give them praise. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord God. Let's praise him. Let's praise him in this place. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we are praying, Father, Lord God. Help us, oh Lord Jesus. I know, Lord God, you have set us free, Father, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, oh Lord God. You know what? We start afresh. We start afresh. The trial might be even a person that you have to work with. You know what? You're just going to have to ask for this. I do not want to suffer. I do not want to suffer. Words that have been spoken in my life. God will help you. Reminds you of this thing. Reminds you of this. Sweet smelling of all. 